Here is another Orico NVMe here. I just finished a review of the Gen 3 drive and they decided to send me over a Gen 4 drive. This one looks very fast from what I've seen. So there's two pads there, depending on how thick your stuff is, or you can put one on the bottom, one on the top, whatever works for you, and a little metal heat sink. Uh, that's the bottom piece there, we'll put that in after. And that's the drive there. Very nice. It's a very aesthetic drive. Gold. Uh, see that there? Very nice. I am going to peel off this here. I don't know if they want me to do it, but that's a Maxios chip I can see right off the bat. That's good. Nice chip. So that's a Maxio chip there, if you can see that on camera. Probably can't. It's always really hard to capture this. Close enough. It's a Maxio chip. Let's put it that way. Um, and these might be just like, like they don't normally say what they are. But I can read it. BWN0AQF1B1HCAD2349... 4471N. Good thing I have good vision up close at least. They're all the same chips. So there's four NAND chips there. And a Maxio controller. Like that there. Nice little drive there. So we're going to pop this into my machine here. There's going to be some pretty basic tests. We'll just test the speed of it. Then we will check the temperatures as we're going along. Then I will fill up the drive and retest it again and see if it basically maintains its speed while it's full. Another thing I like to test is long write. So I'll put a lot, I'll just move a ton of data onto it and see if it crashes. Cause if you have a bad drive, often what happens is it will start writing at a high speed and then it will crash way down and it will just kind of hang out there for a long time. That's when it runs out of cache. We'll see how the cache performs on this too. So let's get that inside the computer and test it out. Okay, so we have our drive plugged in to my desktop computer. And we will see here which one it is. It's not there. So when you first plug in a drive, I'll just have to initialize it. Initialize it, sorry. Come in here. Okay. Where are you? There you are. So we'll initialize this here. Where are we? Oops, Why can't I not type? Orico. Uh, two tip. Okay. Go NTFS. So here's our two here's the uh, two parts of the drive. So we have our temperatures, just idling at 40 degrees, it's fine. Uh, and that's the reason writes at zero. It's never been used, so it's just got whatever they probably wrote at the factory to just make sure it worked. Okay, so we're wrapping it up here. Uh, it's very fast, obviously. 7100 reads, 6400 writes. That's one of the faster drives I've tested, to be honest. Very fast. Oh, it's actually running really cool. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, it doesn't have even like an uh, like my motherboard has significantly larger heatsink options. Like you can put on, you can put on a much larger heatsink onto my motherboard. My motherboard has much larger heatsink options where you can actually strap on a big thing, big chunk of metal basically to keep it down. That's running really cool though. That's impressively cool, realistically, very very cool. So that's great there. Um, yeah, pretty happy with that so far. You can see over here, it's nice and fast very good we can run addo here and again we'll just check the temperatures realistically okay so we're back again we'll just let this run through it's the same thing realistically you can see that's just going to go up and then it should be roughly the same addo versus crystal to smart basically the same so you're getting 6500 to 7000 reads very fast very very fast and that's as fast as gen 4 gets realistically and then your writes are good and temperatures look honestly rock solid like 50 degrees 40 and like it's we're under fit we're around 50 or as a peak here and 40 to 50 uh, on these two here so basically uh, realistically 50 or under despite the fact that i don't have like the big heat sink on it, just the basic one my system is not it's pretty hot in this room you know i don't have a big fan on it or anything like that i've tested gen 4 drives that get much hotter than this so i mean that's pretty impressive there um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I can just stop this, honestly, we get the idea here. We'll come back to this later, but what I am going to do is just start to move a ton of data. So you can see, uh, I obviously have a lot of crap installed on my computer. We can monitor, we can monitor temperatures as we're going here, you know, see if they tank. But what I want to see here is that this doesn't go down. It can go down briefly and come back up, but if this drive here comes, writes for a while and then tanks and just sits there, I'm going to consider it a bad drive. 
uh, the Crucial P3, and interestingly, the Crucial P3 Plus, which is a Gen 4 drive, does that. It'll write for a while, and then it will absolutely tank down to nothingness to the point of just being unusable. And it will just sit there at zero, 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 zero for minutes. Then it will go up, right, and then it will come back down. And what's happening is it's, it's depleting its cache. It has a tiny, pathetic little cache, that drive. Um, and it depletes its cache basically instantly, and then it just sits there like a piece of crap. So a good drive, especially a Gen 4 drive upper end like this, what you want to see, I mean, it can go up and down. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but what I want to see is it's going to write, and then it should consistently stay up. It, eventually, if it runs out of cache, it comes down. There it goes. For a second or two, I want it to go back up, and there it goes. Right back up. That must have just been a file, right? It hit a, hits, hit, hitting a cluster of files here that are small. You can see it's just ripping through those smaller files there. I also find a lot of external NVMEs, like I'm just am using the Samsung T7. That thing is brutal. It's fine for reads, but you'll throw data on it, you'll write to it, and it will just, it'll write like, I don't know, 100 gigabytes, and it'll just sit there, and it'll just do nothing for like 15 minutes until the cache clears out. So you might as well just, you know, transfer data and just leave it, come back at the end of the day. Okay, so I filled it up, and let's have a look here. So now we have not very much space left, 382. So let's see how it performs when it's relatively full. I don't suspect there's gonna be a huge drop, maybe in writes, but I don't suspect there's gonna be much otherwise. So it's very obvious what's gonna happen here. This drive is going to be very fast. You're gonna get incredibly fast reads under any scenario. Realistically, it's gonna just write read very fast. So perfect for something like a PS5, a game drive, whatever, like a secondary drive inside your laptop for files, especially for games, because it's very fast. Uh, and the writes are also extremely fast, as you can see here. Now, it does run out of cache at some point if you're writing. This is a two terabyte drive. I was able to write about 400 gigabytes, 300 to 400 gigabytes straight right through, then it would start to slow down, which is fine. I mean, how often are you sitting down and just writing more than three to 400 gigabytes in a go, straight, fast, from one drive to another? You're not realistically, unless you're just loading up a drive uh, from scratch, which in which case you just, it's fine, just leave it. Loading up games, like if you're downloading tons of games, it's not going to be an issue because they don't just download, you know, like at three gigabytes per second off the internet. So you're not going to run out of cache anyway. So it's very fast. It's very, very fast. And it's going to be excellent for a game drive. And honestly, even for an operating system, it's going to be totally fine. It's a TLC drive. It's very fast. Uh, and I mean, again, you're not writing hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes you know, in one go all the time. And here's something I want to point out, and that's pricing here. So we can see here, this is the Oracle drive. We're looking at approximately $129, this is American, $129 for two terabytes, which is very good. Uh, $15 off coupon, so 115 bucks for two terabytes. Higher end, you're going to pay that because I'm in Canada, obviously. So you're looking at about $115 American uh, so this is a fairly introductory price, I guess I'd call it. Like this thing hasn't been out for a super long time. So, I mean, that's a pretty good value there. 115 bucks for two terabytes of fast NVMe storage, upper upper speed Gen 4. Uh, I did have the Canadian up here and they also have coupons on the Canadian one as well. I mean, these are, these are dynamic. By the time you watch this video, these things might change, right? But I just want to point out the fact that they have great price on this, to be honest. 169.99 for that there. Then you get 5% off and 10% off. So I don't... I don't even know what that is. That's going to be that's going to be like 20 bucks off, you know, 140 ish dollars for 2 terabytes. I mean, yeah, I mean, they may not want me to do this, but uh NVMe will come in here. Yeah, like what are we getting into here for Gen 4 P3 Plus? That's a piece of crap drive. I wouldn't pff, garbage and it's more expensive. Garbage. Um this is a slower drive, Gen like much slower drive. This is slower drive and it's more expensive, right? I mean, 990 Evo, uh, da, 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 slower, right? You can see that there. This is not the like pro. Slower drive and more expensive. Western Digital Black, way more expensive, like $70 more. It is That's around the same speed, but it's also 70 bucks more, right? P3, that's a piece of crap. You don't want that. T5000, it's a good drive. 50 to 60 bucks more. Uh, these are slow. These are not what you think. This is a QLC drive. It's not a TLC drive. So, I mean, yeah, that's a big, I tested a lot of drives, as you can see here. I mean, all of these drives are more expensive, unless they're, you know, significantly slower. Like this is, a, what is this, 2,000 megabytes a second or something like that on this here? It doesn't say. These are like, these are slow. Yeah, 2,000, 2,200 megabytes a second. So that's a big, that's a big part of what's going on here. This is a very fast drive, very fast drive. Uh, 
It doesn't have issues with cache when it's writing. It doesn't get hot whatsoever, and it costs less than the competition, period.